trails to spray certain viral matter into our environment, which would be absorbed by people to uh, manipulate certain parts of proper functioning of the brain. There are also record numbers of respiratory and health-related issues out there. I'm sure somebody in this room knows somebody that's having some type of sinusitis, bronchitis. Uh, it is a reaction. To the allergic re uh, it's an allergic reaction to what's being done to us. They are spraying. There is no doubt about it. Project Park, high altitude aurora research project. The same scientist, Dr. Bernard Eastland, who has certain patent involvement with HARP, uh, also has patent involvement with the elements that are being sprayed in the chemtrails. Also, my question uh, is, to be, for people to ponder, is who has the kind of power to allow jet fuel to be infused with aluminum, barium, and other toxic elements, and authorized to refuel air airplanes with this toxic substance and spray them systematically. I just want everyone to know and understand that of all things, of all the freedoms that we are losing, geoengineering is the number one issue that we are facing because you can have guns and money and you can have everything. If you don't have food and water and you are dying of respiratory or neurological illnesses, what does it matter? So you've heard about vaccines and you'll hear, you know, about smart meters and you'll hear about other issues like fracking. These are all systemic effects. We are getting overexposed to toxins. People will tell you fluorides in the water, but it's not a lot. It is a lot because you're getting it everywhere in your food, you know, water that you drink. Everything is, excuse me, is washed with that water. aerosolized microwave clouds look like. That's what they look like. And we have the meteorological community telling us this is normal. Look, and consider what the science community does after Fukushima. They raised the quote-unquote safe level of radiation by 10,000%. What changed? They make it up as they go, and we have an academic system that has been bought, sold, and paid for by the power structure. These clouds, as you see, are aerosolized with electrically conductive nanoparticulates that can be manipulated when exposed to radio frequencies that can cause them to repel each other. So you get an appearance, if you put iron shavings on a table with a magnet underneath, they align. And this is the same scenario we see in our clouds. So. This is how they're trying to create as much cloud cover as possible, however toxic, however damaging to the atmosphere. That's their goal. This is part of how they accomplish it. These clouds are absolutely, indisputably being exposed to radio frequency transmission, and they're heavy, heavily aerosolized. So the images are filtered. Who does the weather modeling for the National Weather Service and NOAA? Raytheon. Defense contractor, geoengineering contractor, geoengineering patent holder, Raytheon. We have meteorologists now reading scripts. That's all they do. For two decades, it has been a mystery as to what the jets are spraying on us. Finally, we know the source material of these jet chemtrails. Coal ash is reprocessed to create the chemtrail base mixture. Chemtrail residues in rainwater have the same mix of toxic metals as those found in coal ash from coal building power plants. Such a huge amount of chemtrails is sprayed every day that there is no other source for these nano metal oxides except coal ash. Fly ash and bottom ash are created at every coal fired power plant. Fly ash is rich in aluminum oxide, about 30% which is the main chemical found in chemtrail rainwater tests. Coal combustion waste from power plants is the biggest industrial waste stream in the world. About 120 million tons created each year in the USA alone. Over 50 million tons of fly ash is created in the USA each year by processing coal combustion waste. Over 
40% of U.S. coal ash production is reprocessed into cement, road base, drywall, bauxite, shingles, plastic filler, and non-publicized uses like chemtrail mix. Use of fly ash has more than doubled since chemtrails began in the mid-1990s. Chemtrails account for millions of tons of coal ash reuse every year. Secret chemtrail mix is labeled component of flowable fill in coal ash industry documents. 39% of the electricity generated in the U.S. is made by burning coal. Disposing of the ash at each coal burning power plant is a billion dollar problem with most ash put in nearby landfills at a very high cost. After the Kingston, Tennessee coal ash spill in 2008, the electric utility paid over one billion dollars and spent over five years to clean it up. The secret chemtrail program receives fly ash from coal-fired power plants at a very low cost since the power plant operators are trying to get rid of their ash. Railroad or barge transportation makes it easy to move millions of tons of processed fly ash to secret air bases. All coal and electric utilities use transportation, such as railway, to bring coal to the plant. Therefore, it's very easy to remove the fly ash. The low cost of the fly ash, the existing processing facilities, easy transportation, all out in the open, and the lack of public awareness concerning coal waste make fly ash the ideal source material for the secret control program. Patent number 5003186 describes cooling the earth with metal oxides as way into the stratosphere. Fly ash has the right size and mixture of metal oxides, so a minimum amount of processing is needed to create a ready-to-spray, water-based chemtrail slurry. Coal fly ash has the correct size, 10 to 100 microns according to the patent, to be used as a Wellsback reflective material when sprayed in the upper atmosphere. In addition to aluminum, rainfall testing shows a variety of toxic metals which are all found in coal ash, depending on the source of the coal. This rainfall test from Chico, California has high readings in aluminum and barium. This rainfall test from Alachua County, Florida shows high aluminum every day and high barium on a single day. Coal ash is composed primarily of oxides of silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, magnesium, titanium, thallium, sodium, potassium, arsenic, mercury, and sulfur, plus small amounts of radioactive uranium and thorium. Barium, BA, is always present in coal ash and is found in most chemtrails. This California rainfall test shows aluminum, barium, and strontium over a two-month period in uh, January 2014. Fly ash with low barium may have barite mined and added before spraying. Coal ash has dangerous amounts of radioactive uranium, radium, and thorium. Chemtrailed areas are being poisoned with depleted uranium, naturally occurring uranium-238. Radioactive uranium is found in all coal ash. Radioactive thorium is a Wellsback material and is found in the most common type of coal ash, bituminous and sub-bituminous. Wellsback materials patent shows how aluminum oxide, thorium oxide, and other metal oxides can reflect sunlight back into space in an attempt to cool the planet. However, barium is not mentioned as a Wellsback reflective material. If barium is not a reflective metal, why is it being found in chemtrail rainwater tests? According to Jim Phelps, the father of the chemtrail program, barium is used to remove fluoride from the atmosphere caused by coal burning air pollution before the fluoride can create methane from other hydrocarbons, which is called cracking. A 
million metric tons of fluorine are released worldwide each year according to scientific measurements. These fluoride compounds are extremely strong greenhouse gases, about 8,000 times worse than carbon dioxide for trapping heat in the Earth's atmosphere.